So greetings, uh, my name is Brother Nia from the National Association of Black Stock Match Schools uh, here on NABS TV and I am interviewing the MEAP. Yes, MEAP. Yeah, um, I break down the meaning of MEAP Academy Education Centre. Yeah, so MEAP stands for Making um, Education a Priority. So um, yes. that came out of a conference in 2013 um, set up by Manchester Metropolitan University, which was looking at how the university could improve the aspirations and attainment of the local communities around the campus, the new campus that was about to be built then. So the communities came back to me, um, I was um, one of the conference organisers, and said that um, after hearing about um, studio schools and cooperative schools and uh, free schools and uh, arts-led specialist schools, they were more interested in supplementary education because they were already delivering supplementary schools. So they said to us, um, how can you help us with our teaching and our delivery? Um, and that's how we set up MEEP. So MEEP is a consortium of um, African-led um, supplementary schools across Greater Manchester. Okay, and your name is? My name is Ornette, Ornette Clennon. Okay, and who are the other personalities involved in setting up this school? Yes, so we have um, Esther Oludipe, Dr. Oludipe, um, Amber Abisai, um, and Henry Nigufa, and Jumuke uh, Quadri. Okay, and how long has the school been running? We've been running since 2013, but we were constituted as a CIC in 2015. Okay. And so what, what are the, um, the low points in trying to set up the schools? I know it's, it's, not, it's not an easy thing to do. So what are the low points you have to go through to set this all up? Yeah, so for us, because we are a consortium of um, four schools, the low points were really about um, the schools harmonising and some of the personality issues um, involved. So we've had a few personality uh, personnel changes and in, in, in fact changes of school over the years because um, that's just been really hard for some schools to understand the need for cooperation and coming together rather than kind of trying to be individualistic and doing everything themselves. Yeah and what are the high points of sitting up the school? The high points for us actually have been um, landing with the right people and coming together and working in harmony. So coming out of that sort of long tunnel of strife and stress, we've actually arrived at a very, very stable team and we're all kind of pulling in the same direction now. Excellent, excellent. And uh, I, I, uh, currently, are you in premises? Do you have premises? Or you... Yeah, we, we do. So uh, we... Uh, primarily meet at the university on Tuesdays and Thursdays at Man Met, but we're not now because obviously the lockdown. Yeah, so we have in 2020, uh, we're in lockdown at the moment, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, so the, the campus is shut, so we don't meet there. We have our own premises apart from the university, but because of the lockdown, um, we kind of couldn't meet there either, mm. so we now meet online. Great, great. How's that going? It's going incredibly well, actually. It's kind of really opened up new avenues of work for us, <laughs> funnily enough. <laughs> I mean, for, for me personally, and all, I, was, I was suspect for a lot, of the, a lot of parents as well, but a lot, and a lot of the supplement schools dotted around the country, having to go online has actually benefited them. Because yeah. I, you know, I mean, 2015 was the, the year when austerity, austerity cuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, a lot of supplementary schools just lost their funding partially or completely. I Absolutely. think that will be the time when supplementary schools will go online. I thought that would be the next stage. But yeah. it didn't happen. Yeah. They, they still struggled to go to maintain the premises. But yeah. lockdown has literally forced it upon us. Yeah. And schools are thriving. 
Yeah, yeah, I have to say the situation for us up here is that we are um, thriving. So, you know, we are now developing um, our, a homeschooling service. So we, we already had an after school provision and we registered with Ofsted and got that all working. But because of the, the lockdown and the situation with our communities um, and COVID, we just wanted to give our parents a proper alternative. So we did go through the um, process of setting up a free school. So we, we got as far as um, working with the new schools development program and, and going through the application with them. But there are so many hurdles. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Right as well. <laughs> and, you know, if your, if your local authority isn't prepared to support you, you're not going anywhere. Mm. So, um, we kind of tried to work. So we have 10 local authorities, 10 boroughs, and we sort of tried to kind of get into five of them and none of them were interested. None of them were really prepared to, to support us. So we kind of had to go to our plan B and look at um, opening up an independent school. Mm -hmm. And then once um, COVID hit and we were forced to really uh, sort out decent really high quality online provision then that's just open the doors because we don't really need to um, think about providing um, a building for an independent school yeah. we can it's actually do that online that goes with it yes. exactly and the expense yeah. as well exactly mm -hmm. so the government is just about to they were supposed to in, in September this year um, release a program for um, accreditation for online providers mm -hmm. which would be which would give them the same status as an independent school and give them an actual school role so um, we're kind of waiting for that to materialize I think we're just going to do it and become a government uh, recognized online provider Excellent. and then move forward Excellent. That, that seems like the way forward for you I mean, I mean do, are you still going to entertain the idea of a full-time school um well so during the summer um our local council um gave us and others other supplementary schools um a little bit of funding to run summer school programs in our buildings so we've invested in um making our buildings as safe as possible in terms of covid and um, i think for us having an online program will be the way forward but then um, amplifying that with summer school programs so that our online learners actually have the opportunity to meet each other during the summer for our summer programs. Mm -hmm. So a kind of blended kind of situation um, in the long term. So that's kind of where we're aiming. Yeah. And what, what kind of feedback are you getting from parents? Um, the parents are sort of quite relieved, really, that um, the... Um, after school education that we did start is continuing they are ifing and butting at the homeschool option i think we we have to kind there's a lot of convincing that we have to go through um because i think um parents who send their kids to to day schools i think if you do do that as a parent you're really going to have to think long and hard about well do you have the resources do you have the knowledge to homeschool you know how's that going to fit in, exactly <laughs> so, i mean part of that what what we're trying to do as well is um we do our own teacher training so we're launching that formally in the new year and part of that teacher training is about giving an option to parents who perhaps want to homeschool but don't feel confident enough to do that so we can give them um, accredited teacher training so that we can grow um, our own teachers from our, our communities. That's beautiful, beautiful. And what about the, the children? How, how are they coping um, with the online learning facilities? Yeah, um, the young people, our young people, because I'm sure it's not all young people, but our young people are taking to it like a, a duck to water, really. Yeah, I think as well for us, we've been able to, as well as the academic um, subjects that, that we provide, I've been very careful to, to bring in other people who kind of do a culturally appropriate PSHE, 
so that the well-being and looking at well-being through a culturally appropriate lens is kind of offered to the kids as well so you know using um, music videos, current music videos, um, particularly around Black Lives Matter and exploring that and how they feel about um, racism and how that um, affects them and what that looks like in their school settings. So being able to use culture and relate it to the young people has given us um, opportunities to explore um, their well-being and mental well-being and then that kind of ties into their engagement with the academic subjects as well. Absolutely and uh, remind us what PHE means? Oh sorry so personal social and emotional health right. um, education yeah so that's kind of within the curriculum and I think it's a mandatory subject in schools mainstream schools but what we're finding is that um, that in the the curriculum is the only space where we can really inject um, our Ubuntu pedagogy, which we train our teachers up and we integrate across all of our subjects. But I think that's, uh, that's the only space within the mainstream curriculum that, where that can fit and where we can devote um, time. And I think our kids need that because they don't really have a culturally appropriate learning space in mainstream education. That's what's missing from day one as well. Yeah, yeah. That's why we have supplementary schools. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. So, yeah. um, what lessons? What What are the lessons you you, you teach? Um, we teach uh, English, maths, and the sciences. We also have um, an English as an additional language um, option, EAL option. Um, so. We work with our local councils with looked after children. Um, and um, one of our contracts involved um, a young lady from the Congo whose academic English was quite low. She couldn't access um, KS3 and she'd be of the, the age she was 15 at the time. Um, so we consolidated her KS2 skills in French as a scaffold for her academic English and then she got a place at college to do KS3, English, maths and French. And we did that in six months. Interesting. So, this is the kind of good news stories that is not yeah. coming out from our South American schools, which is why I do these interviews and why I promote our own schools. Because these are the results that are happening day in, day out. Throughout yeah, yeah. The country, and this story yeah. is not getting told. No, it's not. It's not. Beautiful. So I think... I think one of the, the big lessons that we've learned is that as a supplementary school, you've just got to really look at the resources you have in terms of the people. So we didn't, I, um, as I sort of co-run the school, didn't really realize that we had all these community languages available in terms of our tutors. Um, and it wasn't until um, this young lady joined one of our evening sessions on campus before lockdown um, that, I realized that we did have um, a guy, um, a tutor from the Cameroon, French speaking, who'd be perfect to teach this young lady in French. And then that just opened out to the realization that our tutors were native speakers of other community languages as well. So that enabled us to put together um, packages for local authorities to approach their virtual schools and of course because of the the pandemic and the, the lockdown because we're online they took us more seriously because all the services are now more or less online yeah. so being able to really get good at delivering um, online lessons particularly in foreign languages with a view towards scaffolding in English actually put us at um, ahead in the queue and I think many supplementary schools across the country um, from our communities could do a similar thing it just takes a bit of consolidating the resources you have and then strategically thinking about who to approach so the nice thing about local authority contracts is once you get onto their um, purchasing systems then that potentially is a good income stream because the virtual schools have a, a legal obligation to provide education for their looked after children. Now, 8% um, of the country's looked after children are black. So if we are kind of um, marketing a sort of culturally appropriate, academically excellent 
uh, way of teaching the children and interacting with their carers, then that's going to be playing to our strengths as supplementary schools because what the the big for me and from what we're looking at one of the biggest areas that we have as a strength is how we embed cultural heritage within our academic teaching absolutely yes and and, and what kind of um, interaction do you have with mainstream schools not a huge amount actually um i have to be honest so mm -hmm. what what we do we um work with our parents to do that liaising with the school so a lot of parents don't really understand the system yeah. so uh, my colleague Amber Abbasai she actually goes into the schools with the parents to kind of for those meetings and kind of sorts things out with the teachers with the parents um, so I think it's about equipping um, the te the parents with those skills of um, school liaison that's really important absolutely and do you um have any involvement with home educators? We're, go, we're just sort of going into that market. So we have um, a small informal network of homeschoolers in Manchester who are kind of uh, partnered with us and informally. So we're just going to kind of launch into that more with them. Okay, excellent. Because uh, one thing I do uh, try to encourage home educators is to use the um, supplementary schools networks to help them with their um, home Absolutely. School. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what we're pushing. Current trends and things like that. Yeah. I mean, one of the things we're, we're, we're looking at and more than looking at, we're, we're hoping to start this next year is to offer accredited um, exams so to actually be an exam center mm -hmm. so that our homeschoolers can learn with us online and then actually sit their exams in our exam center That's so right. we're we're looking at um providing the core subjects english maths and science and then what we'll say to the parents if you want to concentrate on the sort of cultural heritage related subjects drama and music and maybe languages then you can maybe do that as um, an extended project qualification which we would then kind of help you get accredited so that we can form really good partnerships between our tutors and the parents who are obviously home um, school tutors as well um, so that their um, their work becomes accredited absolutely absolutely brilliant stuff and, what, and do you um, sort of involve some sorts of life skills in some of your lessons life skills yes we do now we have four departments in our school so we've got um, online learning so i i lead um, online learning um henry nagufa leads um, skills for life and that's kind of where we we work with our our needs and we do a lot of life skills um esther oludipe and amber abisai they lead um after school um provision and then jay uh, jamuke Quadri, she leads um, the primary and early years foundation, but she also does um, life skills for the older children as well. So yeah, we, so the nice thing about um, the pandemic, it's not really nice, but it is what it is, is that because we, we went out of this. Yeah, yeah. Because we were forced to go online, our different departments now are threaded through our online provision. So I'm able to, because I, I lead the online platform, I'm able to sort of uh, coordinate our different departments a bit more efficiently because they're having to go through our online platform. And that's kind of strengthened us because it means then that there's been a lot more collaborative work between our departments than before. Brilliant, absolutely. Every time I do these interviews with the supplementary school, there's always amazing stuff that comes out of it. And, and, and I keep on saying to you know, especially our black businesses, we need to support our own supplementary schools because, you know, the, yeah, we the do. support from government is yeah, yeah. very non-existent. Non -existent. And we have yeah, to support yeah. our own because the system works. Yeah, it does. We prove that the system works. So what yeah. is the problem? Yeah, yeah. Do you have any um, support from the local, local businesses up there in Manchester? We're trying, but no, no. Um, so Henry, um, who also is in charge of our enterprise relationships, he's trying, but um, no luck. And I think 
I think that's partly our fault, partly as in 20% <laughs> our fault, is because I don't think we as supplementary schools are quite as business minded as we need to be. So yeah. businesses need to know that if they're going to support us, there's going to be a kind of return on their investment. And yeah, but the return on the investment, there has to be the children. Uh, yeah, but they don't, they don't quite see it in that way. We, we do, but they don't. And unfortunately, I think we just have to kind of get our heads around the, the bottom line, the bottom figures that they think about. So for us, in terms of our business plan, because we've been forced to really look at where our income streams are going to come from, how are we going to manage our resources in order to tap those income streams? I think we're in a better position to attract some sort of sponsorship from our local businesses because we've been forced to look at so we can say well look your return in investment apart from the progress of the kids is going to be x amount but yeah. it's taken us it's taken us all these years to get to that stage and it's only taken us since the the pandemic we just had to cut everything down and think again how we were going to deliver our services and prioritize yeah absolutely beautiful stuff so Ornette, thank you very much for your time uh, again again this these interviews are, are just showing the fantastic work that's going on in our community that we all need to embrace and fully fully support so absolutely yeah. Ornette, yeah. Tenor, thank you very much for you and your team for what you're doing up there in manchester uh, keep the fire burning and keep in yeah. touch yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Take care, my brother. Take care. Bye-bye.